So instead of telling you the ways to be a better housewife, homemaker, I'm just going to share with you guys what not to do. These are some things, true stories, in my own experience in my last year and a half at being a housewife, stay-at-home mom, homemaker, full-time, some things that I have failed at. So I thought this would be a fun little video to make just to share some funny stories with you guys and just show you the learning curve that it has taken for me to get to where I am today. Um, a lot of times I forget that I've only been at this a year and a half. If you don't know my story, I was a teacher before I had kids and for the first three years of my, two years of my children's lives, I was still working outside of the home and it was just heartbreaking and it was always a dream of mine to come home. So I just wanna also encourage you if you're at that phase and you're you're longing to, to come home with your family and you're just not there yet, I was there, I feel you, and it took us a little time to realize that we actually could live on just one income because we were in that two income trap that society puts us in of we need this, we need that, we have to be able to afford this lifestyle, afford this vehicle, afford this vacation spot, and we realized that me being a homemaker, being home with our family was more important. So I just wanted to offer you that encouragement up front here that if this is a dream of yours, that it can happen. It's not been without sacrifice, but the blessing that it has brought our family with me being the full-time homemaker is just endless. It's just, it's a joyous to look back at, see how far we've come. So let's jump right in. The first mistake I made as a new homemaker was not having any sort of plan or routine to our day. So when I left my teaching career, there was there was a transition that had to happen. I was already a mom of two kids, um, a two-year-old and a nine-month-old baby, and I had like routines with them for the evening and the afternoon, but like when I woke up in the morning, there was literally no routine. I left my job on Christmas vacation and never, never returned in January. So whenever I was now home full time, it was just like an extended Christmas vacation. And when I would have holidays in the past from my teaching career, like it was just fun days, fun field, no routine, no schedule. That's just kind of how we took our vacation. But now I was home full time and I needed some routine, some plan, some some sort of schedule to our day. Not anything rigid, but my kids, like those days I look back were so chaotic for myself. My mind was just pulled a hundred different directions. There was no plan for what we were gonna eat, what we were gonna do that day, if we were gonna go anywhere, if we were gonna bake anything, if we were gonna do anything outside, if we were gonna do any cleaning, like there was no routine and Looking back, those were some very chaotic days for myself and my children because we all thrive on routine and that was something I definitely made a mistake on. It took me about a month or two to get some good routines and schedules into place and those have adapted so much since then. For the first month or two, we had none. It was just fun-filled days for all. <laughs> the next mistake I made was taking downtime throughout the day on my phone. So I would find myself when my kids would get busy on a task or when they would lay down or rest, I would just grab my phone and start scrolling. And that was like my recharge time. And I would end up getting nothing done and then feeling more tattered and less recharged than I did before I picked up my phone. There were also times when I would pick up my phone to do like Instagram, YouTube things for, for this channel. I really just was left feeling more frustrated because I'd be trying to look at something or read something or send an email or do something on Instagram and my kids would interrupt me because they're wanting my attention and I would just get more frustrated and more aggravated at them and I don't want to be that kind of mom. So this took me a good six or eight months to actually realize that the less time I was on my phone during downtime throughout the day, the, the more peaceful our home was because my kids just continued playing. I just sat and watched them or I joined in with them or went into another task around the house instead of sitting there on my phone where they, they know I'm in their presence, but I'm distracted from them and kids pick up on that much, much more than we actually realize. So that has been a big one. And sometimes I still catch myself going to grab my phone during a downtime in the day. And immediately I remember why I set this restriction, this rule into place for myself as far as setting boundaries around the screen time. Number three, so this one has a funny story with it. Procrastinating, buying, and ordering like household necessities. So this is things like toilet paper, paper towels, diapers, Q-tip, like the necessities that we that we all have in this modern world, mainly toilet paper. So when we first got married, my husband was always just kind of on top of keeping the toilet paper and stuff. He had been living single, and then when we got married, he kind of just continued to do that. And he'd always tell me that 
his worst thing. Like he never wanted to run out of toilet paper. So he was always like stockpiling toilet paper. Well, then at some point that task got over delegated, got delegated over to me. There was no like communication of, okay, now you're in charge of keeping up with the toilet paper. I think it was just kind of assumed um, around the time I came home full time that I would just kind of take that over, which is perfectly fine. Well, I had put our toilet paper on auto ship through Amazon because there was a specific toilet paper we liked and it was around the time that toilet paper was hard to get in the stores, if y'all remember that time. And I put it on auto ship and had it shipped to our house every two months, I think, and that was fine. Well, at one point, the Amazon order like was delayed and it asked me, would you like to replace your toilet paper with this type of toilet paper? And, the, and I didn't choose the replacement. So I was like, okay, next time we go to the store this coming weekend, I'll pick up some toilet paper and just get some something at the grocery store that day. Well, that time came and I forgot. I knew we were getting low on toilet paper. We, I would like count the rolls down and I remember when we were down to one roll. We don't have any upstairs in the storage space. This is the last roll. This is like the last five squares of toilet paper. And I texted my husband, I was like, um, if you're gonna need to go to the bathroom right when you get home, you're probably gonna need to pick up some toilet paper or, or else we're gonna just pick up some when we go out tonight. And he laughed. He was like, you let us run out of toilet paper again, Amy. So that was a, a funny story there. And I thought I would've learned, I, you would have thought I learned my lesson. But then probably the next time that toilet paper was come due to be replaced in our house, uh, my parents were coming to visit and I was like getting the bathrooms clean, get everything tidied up. They were coming to stay for a night or two. And again, we were low on toilet paper. Again, our Amazon order was this time delayed. I should probably not to trust and rely on Amazon anymore for my toilet paper needs, but the order was delayed this time. So like I could see that it had been shipped. It was going to be here in time, but my parents were coming for the weekend and all of a sudden it was Friday and the toilet paper was still running late. It was like it was lost in the mail. And I text my mom and I was like, Hey, I know you're headed up here just shortly, but do y'all mind bringing some toilet paper with you? Because our Amazon order is late and I don't have, I only have like one roll. And she was like, of course. And of course we have my sweet parents. They brought me like a whole 12 pack of toilet paper just to be sweet. But another time that I let us run out of toilet paper, I've done this with diapers as well because we do use cloth diapers a lot. And when we use disposable at night, I sometimes forget to order those. So don't let your family run out of the necessities, mainly toilet paper. The fourth one that I wanted to mention is procrastinating starting dinner. So I share so many videos on cooking from scratch and nourish, cooking nourishing meals, but yet I still have trouble at staying on top of this. To this day, this is something that I've gotten a lot better about, but for a while there, I would just procrastinate dinner. Uh, sometimes I would meal plan on Sundays, and those were the weeks that I did not procrastinate dinner, but if I did not meal plan and I had no idea what we were going to cook for dinner, I'd wake up that morning and kind of think about it, and if we were like low on groceries, we usually go to the grocery store every other week, by the way, so, we're, so there's some weeks where our grocery are a little lower and have to get a little more creative. So it would typically be those weeks when I'd wake up in the morning and I'd fix our breakfast and I'd be like, okay, I need to think about dinner. I don't have it planned already, so let me think about this now. Well, then it became like this daunting task because we had not a lot of groceries and I didn't feel like getting creative. So I would just put it off. Then lunch would come around. I would figure out something for lunch, usually some leftovers or I'd pull something together for my kids and I. And I was like, okay, I've got to, I've got to think about dinner now. We're getting down to the wire. I've got to figure out what we're going to have. And again, that like roadblock of we don't really have a lot in our house. I'm going to get creative. We'll just push it off again. And then all of a sudden I'd be putting the kids down for quiet time. I'd be doing some things around the house and realize that I still have not decided what we're having for dinner. At this point, it's too late to ferment anything with sourdough. If I want it to long ferment, it's too late to soak or soak beans or rice, make them more digestible. It's almost too late to thaw meat. So I usually just grab some hamburger meat out of the fridge or some sausage for freezer, put it in the sink and then whip something together. And those are like the meals that I dread the most because they're just thrown together because I did not take the time to properly prepare and plan for that meal. And it's always healing and nourishing and that's fine to have, if that happens like every now and then, especially if you have like a busy day and you're out of the house, but y'all will let this happen multiple times a week and it's something that I highly do not recommend. <laughs> But don't procrastinate dinner. Even better if you can make some sort of a plan earlier in the week so you just know that on Monday you're having something with chicken. On Tuesday you're having something with beef. On Wednesday you're having something with fish or venison. On Thursday you're having something with like a legume. Friday you're having, like just have a general idea. You don't have to actually meal plan it, but at least knowing what meat you're gonna be using is very helpful so you know what sides you need to go with it and you can properly prepare, ferment, soak, 
at least we do in our family. I try to properly prepare our foods so they're the most nourishing and digestible for our bodies. But when I procrastinate dinner, that can't happen. And I, I preach to you guys about preparing nourishing meals and then sometimes I still let that slip my brain. So don't procrastinate dinner. Just suck it up and figure out what you're gonna make and get it prepared. And lastly, not putting the kitchen to bed each night, which means having the dishes washed, counters wiped down, dishes put away if possible, and everything neat and tidy. So in our kitchen, it's kind of difficult to do this because our kitchen is not finished. So our kitchen never looks neatly put to bed, but I do like to do the best I can with what we're working with. So uh, this sounds so simple, but there's times when I just don't feel like putting the kitchen to bed. And this literally takes me 10 minutes most of the time because I've usually already washed the dishes after dinner, but if there's anything soaking in the sink, a lot of times I would procrastinate that until the next day and then I wake up and have breakfast dishes on top of those soaking dishes. And when something is soaked for about 20 or 30 minutes, it can probably be washed, but y'all, I would put things off sometimes like two or three days, like several nights of not putting my kitchen completely to bed. And this just sets up the next morning uh, on a bad note. So having my kitchen put to bed, counters wiped down, cabinets somewhat wiped down. My cabinets are not always that clean. Dishes put away if, if possible. So there's nights where I don't get the dishes all the way put away, but at least they're washed and ready to put away the next morning. Just having everything put away and ready to welcome you the next morning for a beautiful morning the next day. So that was another thing that I used to just put off and would leave half the dishes done, half the dishes in the sink. Um, so yeah, putting your kitchen to bed is going to set you up for such a more beautiful morning the following day. So those are five things that I have failed at in homemaking that I have been trying to get better at. I'm still working on lots of these things. So I hope that you will learn something from some of these. If you've done any of these five things or have struggled with any of these five things or you have another tip to add of something that you have failed at in your homemaking journey, let us know down below. I thought this was a fun video to make, just kind of to share some little stories of failures that I've had in my homemaking journey this last year and a half. This is absolutely the best job ever and I am so blessed and grateful to be able to have this opportunity to be a homemaker, to serve my family, to take care of our home, our children, to serve my husband, to be his helpmate. And I just encourage you to enjoy the journey of homemaking, enjoy the learning process that it that comes with it. There's so much creativity to have in this space as a homemaker, even in the mundane moments, because a lot of times people feel like homemaking is mundane and repetitive and boring. And I've felt that, but there's so many other days that it's just such a blessing and just a beautiful, just a beautiful life, guys. So I hope you got some funny stories, some some advice on what not to do in homemaking. Again, let us know down below if you have any funny stories about your homemaking journey, and I will see you in a future video.